Thank you for inviting me. Uh, my name is Nina Tuft and I'm here to present the Novo data. Um, it's a protocol used to treating um, ALL patients 1 to 45 years. And it's a known fact that children uh, with ALL have a better survival than adults. Uh, and after year 2000, many publications came showing that um, young adults transferred to a pediatric ward had a better survival compared to young adults who were treated in an adult ward. So this led to implementation of pediatric um, protocols in many countries, and uh, the Nordic and Baltic countries also uh, approach this. So um, our purpose of this research was to um, find out why children have a better survival than adults. And my main focus today will be to, sh uh, to, to show you if we could improve this survival by changing the protocol to these uh, more intensified, uh, intensified pediatric protocols. So the next slide is a bit busy. Uh, but I want to show you the protocol, which is uh, quite complex, um, and first some facts. So we used one common protocol for all patients, one to 45 years. It's Philadelphia negative uh, ALL, which is important to say. Uh, all patients had identical diagnostics and were risk stratified the same way and were treated the same way. They are divided into four risk groups and we have included 1,509 patients, and this was until uh, the end of 2014, but the protocol continues. Uh, we are seven countries that united, that's uh, Nordic uh, <coughs> uh, countries, uh, Denmark, Sweden, Norway, Iceland, Finland, and then uh, Lithuania and Estonia. We have now in this cohort 221 uh, adult patients. When I say adult, I mean 18 and up to 45, and we have now a median follow-up of four years. Now the protocol, do we have this? No, I don't have. The protocol is shown here, uh, and the patient enter at day one. Do I have a pointer? I don't have a pointer. Uh, day one, if you can see it. Um, and this is where they are divided into induction therapy, which will last for four weeks. So uh, depending on a few uh, cytogenetic changes and B or T um, immune phenotype, uh, they will have induction for four weeks and then a bone marrow. Yeah, thank you. We take a bone marrow and we evaluate the response to chemotherapy. We call it minimal residual disease and it's done day 29. You see it uh, here. And if you have a good response, you can continue in either a standard risk or an intermediate risk treatment. If you have a poor response, you can go to high risk uh, block therapy. And if you have a very poor response, day 29, you are directed to high risk, at least three blocks, and then transplanted. Then you continue in your uh, chosen arm, and then day 79, a new bone marrow is done. And if you still have signs of leukemia, that is uh, more than 0.1% by minimal residual disease uh, methods, PCR and flow, uh, you are also directed to transplantation and first remission. Otherwise, you continue, and the total length is 2.5 years for all patients with maintenance uh, therapy. So the results are shown here. Now, these are the so results for the uh, whole cohort. And as expected, you see the young children here, they are one to nine years old. They are known to have the best uh, survival. Uh, and as expected, they do very well. This is event-free survival. And here you have the teen and the teenagers. They are 10 to 17 years old, also very good uh, survival. And here in yellow, you have the adults that are 18 to 45. Um, I put in this line to show you the data that I have access to. This is a Danish cohort uh, of patients, 108 patients treated before we initiated the pediatric treatment. So these patients also Philadelphia negative, uh, fully treated 2.5 years with a traditional adult uh, regime they have an event-free survival of uh, 42%. So we are pleased with the results and we uh, expect to continue this. Uh, so in conclusion, we have improved the survival for adult patients 18 to 45 years. Uh, we show that the cure rates are close to that of children and I don't have time today to show you the different risk groups. There are four risk groups as I mentioned, but if you compare an adult in a standard risk group with a child in a standard risk group, there's no difference. They do the same. Same goes for the high risk group. This age is not a, an, an issue here. Um, for the intermediate risk group, there's a difference. Adults do not do the same as children, but it's close. Um, yeah. So 
What we need now is further cooperation because we need to unite uh, to get more patients so we can show uh, new developments faster. We also need to find new risk criteria uh, because as for the intermediate risk group, we dis something is missing for the adults. We need more cytogenetics. We need something to define the patients as high risk or not. And then we need new drugs because with this um, method we reach the limit of toxicity that we find um, reasonable. So thank you.